Adam Savage from Tested here in my cave and in front of me is one of my favorite kinds of packages to get. Oh, there's a lot of packages that I covet and love getting, but this is one of the best because it's from our friends at Prop Store. They are about to have an auction that includes tons of armor from the film The Great Wall by the incredible Chinese director Zhang Yimou, who directed Hero and House of Flying Daggers. This film uh, has tremendous amounts of art direction that goes so deep it would actually kind of bend your mind. Our friends at Weta Workshop actually did over a thousand separate designs to construct 6,000 separate prop pieces for this film that were handled and used and uh, interacted with by over 500 extras. Yeah, when you're talking about this film, you're talking about a scale that is kind of unimaginable. Um, however, out of all that tremendous creativity and ingenuity and beauty comes some incredible film props. And in here is one that you and I will get to witness for the first time together. Oh, I just... love the possibilities that these packages represent. Okay, that seems like, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that that's a shield. I'll just put that there for right now. Let's see. Oh, yay. Okay, there's one piece. Ooh, it's heavy. Ah, oh, here's another. Oh, oh, feels like a helmet. Now, is that two of shelves? Yep, that's everything. Okay, okay, we'll save the helmet for last because it's gonna be the coolest thing. Look at these giant Ziploc baggies, man. It's set a world record sandwich. Okay, so that lives there. Everything's wrapped in white linen. That's archival. Oh, look at these. I think these are, yeah, some kind of shin guard gaiters. Yeah, that's what those are. Okay, place those like that. Oh, 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 I sense a boot or two. Yep. Look at this. That is entirely custom. Again, for movies, you often see things that are like, it looks custom, but it's an off-the-shelf item that they modified. These don't look like that. These look like they're entirely custom, which is impressive. Ooh, ooh, oh, beautiful. Oh, man. Look at this. Now, this is a jacket, but look at that. Beautiful. Whatever this is, it's super soft, but it doesn't look soft. It actually looks like, almost like metal plates or uh, studs even, but I can't even tell you they're like, it's actually soft. These textures are fantastic. I mean, all of this meant to add visual tapestry to every scene. Wow, gorgeous. Uh, all right, so that's a jacket, and I think, is that, no, 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 there's more in here. Oh, goodness, okay, I think these are going to be pants. I'm just going to guess, yep, okay, jacket and pants. All right, I'm guessing that I correctly opened the undergarments and shoes and boots first, and now here, <gasps> Hey, oh my God, look at that. That's, that's a skirt. Oh my God, it sounds great. Looks great. Look at this. Look at this triangular male. And this is a, it looks like to me like a, good God. It's practical. And by that I mean, it looks like a bunch of <clears throat> triangular pieces in a, um, a, a tessellated array. Is that the correct term? Uh, and then with wire holding it together, and it really is. These are all separate pieces. This is, this is not cast monolithically. It is assembled like this. Um, these are also done the same way, each as a separate piece. My mind is bending under the load of the craftspersonship here. Wow, okay, there's that. 
And, oh, here comes the, oh, dude, look at that. Oh my God, what a piece, what a. So that connects that to that. Oh, this is all actually pretty clearly straightforward as to how it goes. These are the pauldrons, they're cast in a resin and then finished. And I mean, just so here, you can see this is production used because this piece has been scratched up and you can see some of the translucent white resin underneath. But the moment you see the white resin underneath, then you start to be able to see just how many colors there are in here. This isn't just sprayed gold. These are sprayed gold with a little bit of red. There's a little bronze going on. There's some black wash in some of the small places. Um, there's like at least four or five colors going on. And as I'm always fond of pointing out, the more colors you add, the more depth you get. Um, oh yeah. We're gonna get dressed very soon. Oh, oh, oh. oh. there are so many beautiful battle scenes in this film and they are really particularly incredible when you see all the armor and you see all the different factions in their, are in their similar armors. I mean, they made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of suits. Oh my God, look at this. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, tiger. Oh my God. Oh. oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta set this. Oh, look at that. They don't, oh, there we go. I see, so that, to that, to that, to that. This piece is worth calling out for a second, um, not just because of its incredible execution, but also because of its design and how it fits into the overall frame of the picture. Zhang Yimou is famous for his use of color, of hyper vibrant color separating out ideas and themes in his films. Um, each of the factions uh, that are fighting in the Great Wall have different color schemes. And so it wasn't up to Weta just to make 6,000 shields. They had to make shields in different categories to symbolize each of the groups that would be using. So this is the Tiger Corps and there would be different shields for each of the others. And we're gonna cover those on Tested as well. But then the closer you get, the more the detail rewards the careful eye that you get to see that uh, this was meant to be thrown and they are thrown in the film. So it's like a buzz saw. But as you look up close, you can see these battle scars across this. One of the things they were clear about on this film was that they didn't want the extras holding cheap versions of what the hero actors were holding. And so everyone was given props and materials that had weight and had uh, uh, the physical veracity to it. Uh, so this is heavy. This is like, I don't need to method act to feel like this is going to protect me. Uh, and Weta Workshop and all the other costume makers, but Weta Workshop specifically, Richard Taylor talked to us about how he engineered different types of urethane rubbers with different hardnesses depending upon what prop it would be used for. So this is a fairly rigid urethane, um, which seems to have a soft internal. All of this is engineering and chemical problem solving that companies like Weta have to do for a project like this. Even though the final result looks like it's made out of metal, it has to be soft so it doesn't start hurting actors. Just beautiful. Again, I mean, this mix of new uh, materials like soft resins and polyureas along with old materials like the leather and the satin and the ways in which this thing is bordered and it's just gorgeous. Oh, stunning, stunning work. Okay, yeah. I think that's all the parts and pieces. Let's get dressed. All right. Oh, like a glove. Seriously, these boots fit so well, I could wear them around all day. Oh. <laughs> Oh. 
Ja. Ja. These are the wraps for my hands. Now they look like they're wrapped around, but in fact, to save time, they're simply sewn that way. That is really beautiful. That's really, that's lovely efficiency in the filmmaking process right there. Um, one of the things that's really clear as we're doing this together is actually how easy they made the process. This is, on a film, if you've got 500 extras to dress, you don't want it to take an hour per extra. <laughs> you want to be able to get everyone dressed in a fairly short order. So with a good costume team, you know, you want everyone to have their coffee and then get ready to ready to film. You gotta pull a little harder, a little harder. That's it, right there, good. Yeah, awesome. Yep. Okay, oh, okay, now, Norm, I'll definitely need your help for this. Um, yeah, so that goes to there, and then the buckle. From the, f that's it. It's actually quite comfortable. I could spend all day in this. It's actually not bad at all. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, here, let me just, uh, okay. I know my glasses are on brand, but this suit is like pushing them into my head, so I'm gonna pull them out. There we go. A rare ginger member of the Tiger Corps. Lesser known background extra. Oh, oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, look at that. It feels good, it looks good. What more could you ask from a piece of costume? Ah, the craftsmanship on this thing, it's magnificent. These greaves right here, from up close, they completely look, as close as you wanna look, like hammered brass, carefully etched by craftspeople. It is in fact a hard rubber urethane, uh, carefully treated with multiple paints and vacuum metalization and metallic paint treatments and weathering and it's super comfortable. This whole suit doesn't weigh more than maybe 15 kilograms at the most, spread out across my body, made mostly of rubber and leather, it moves well. Uh, I could see if I was outdoors on a hot day, this could become unpleasant, but it is beautiful. Oh, what an incredible addition to my armor collection. Last thing I wanna tell you is that the auction for suits just like this one and 150 other suits of armor is up right now at propstore.com. Go get yourself one of these.